Hey everyone and welcome back. I'm Rick Fussell and this is The Engrain Workshop. In today's video, we're going to be building a sandpaper sharpening system or platform that we're going to use to hand sharpen our chisels and our hand plane blades. That's coming up next here at The Engrain Workshop. So for this project, you're going to need just a scrap piece of three quarter inch ply. Uh, it doesn't have to be Baltic birch. It could be just sanded or, uh, you know, any type of uh, plywood, uh, as long as it's three quarters of an inch thick. And then you'll need some glass. Uh, our glass is uh, a quarter inch thick by 33 and a quarter inches long by 12 and a half inches wide. Now, these are just arbitrary dimensions. This is just a piece of glass that I had. You can go to a big box store and pick up this. Uh, just make sure that they uh, smooth the edges. You don't want really sharp edges. Um, but, you know, you can make it 10 by 36, uh, whatever even dimensions. Um, but you roughly, you roughly want it rectangular shape. And I think 10 inches is a good width and 36 inches is a good length. Um, like I said, mine here is 12 and a half by 33 and a quarter. It really doesn't matter. You just want a piece of glass because you want to make sure that uh, there's no gap. You want to make sure that it's, it's flush and smooth. Uh, that way you can, uh, when we start our sanding process, you'll get a nice clean polished edge on your chisels and on your, uh, your hand uh, planer uh, blades. So as you can see here, with my feeler gauge, there's no gap uh, in my glass. It is flat. Now you don't have to use glass. You can use marble or some other substrate as long as it's dead flat. That's what you're looking for. So now that we've got our glass and we verified that it's dead flat, we're gonna take and cut our plywood down to size. I wanna make sure that I've got probably a couple of inches on the sides maybe a couple inches at the bottom and then probably four to six inches at the top. Uh, the reason why we're going to drill a hole here just uh, for hanging it uh, for ease of use. Uh, and also that will give us enough uh, room around the perimeter if we need to um, uh, clamp it down to our table while we're sharpening. We now have a clamping surface to do that. So the next thing we're going to do is cut our plywood uh, down to the finished dimensions. So for the plywood, my finished width is going to be 16 inches wide by 40 inches long. And we're going to rip this down over at the table saw. Keeping a sharp edge on your chisels, knives, and plain irons is a crucial step in successful hand tool work. A dull edge simply won't perform as well and will often lead to pushing harder on the tool or forcing a cut. Uh, this in turn can lead to accidents. In these situations, a dull blade is far more dangerous than a sharp one. So it's important to develop a system for sharpening your tools that's reliable and doesn't take away too much time from your woodworking. With the platform ripped down uh, to a width of 16 inches, I'm now going to lay out the length of the, the platform. In my instance here, I'm laying it out, I believe, at 40 inches. And then I'm going to strike a line and take it over to the miter saw and cross cut it there at 40 inches. And since the width of the board exceeds my cross cut distance here at the miter saw, I am going to have to cut it once and then flip it over and make another cut to completely cut through uh, the platform down to a length of 40 inches. So with a half inch Forstner bit chucked up here at the drill press, I'm going to drill a hole in the center of the platform toward the top. And this is going to be for storage purposes only. Um, I'm using a black pipe clamp uh, to the wall uh, for storage and this is just going to make it easier to store the platform system. And I will chamfer the insides of the circle and you could also use a round over if you'd like as well. With a chamfer bit in the router I'm now going to chamfer the circle on both sides of the platform and this is just going to smoothen the edge. I'm using black iron pipe. Uh, mounted to the wall to store uh, my sharpening system and this is going to make it easier to get on and off that pipe. I use the same pipe to store my DIY track saws 
uh, track and it, it works out great so this is just you know a comfort feature uh, you don't have to do this but it does make it easier to get on and off the pipe that I'm going to use for storage I'm going to be using a honing guide to sharpen my chisels and my plane irons uh, the guide holds the tool at the proper angle so you can sharpen the bevel before you can start honing the bevel, you need to set uh, the angle for the guide. Uh, for most woodworking tools, this angle is going to be at 25 degrees to 35 degree range. I'm going to make notches here on the sharpening platform to make setting up either a 25, 30 degree or 35 degree angle a little easier. I'm using a tall fence here attached to my miter saw gauge, which is going to allow me to cut these angled notches on three corners of the platform. And this is what I'll use to set up my honing guide. I'm gonna finish up the guide cut here with just a pull saw. And as you can see, I left about a quarter of an inch of plywood. So I really only cut out about a half inch of plywood for the notch. And here you can see the 25 degree notch, the 30 degree notch, and then the 35 degree notch. Now that we have the platform complete, we've got it cut to its final length and width. We got the, uh, the hole for, for storage cut in the top of it uh, with a chamfered edge. And then we also notched, we made three notches, uh, one for 25 degrees, 30 degrees, and 35 degrees. And those, will be, those notches will be used to align our chisel or our plane blade in our honing guide. And that's what we'll use to sharpen uh, those, the blades and the ch uh, chisels. But in order to fasten the glass, to the platform, I'm gonna just take a two before and cut some one inch by half inch strips, one for the top and one for the bottom of the glass. And then I'm gonna cut a half, uh, half inch by quarter inch rabbit uh, in the strips. And that's what we're gonna use to fasten the glass to the actual platform itself. So the next thing we're gonna do is cut out the half inch by one inch uh, cleats for the tops and bottoms of the glass out of this two by four. So the first cut I'm gonna make here on the two by four is just to cut off the rounded edges and give me um, 90 degree edges on the two by four. And then once I get that rounded over edge cut off, I'll put that as a reference point against my table saw fence. And then I'll rip it down to a one inch uh, thickness. Um, and then I'll adjust the uh, fence on the table saw uh, to a half inch and then rip it at a half inch. That way it'll give me a one inch by half inch uh, cleat for both the tops and bottoms. And then I'll cut the rabbits. And I'm cutting the rabbits here at a half inch by a quarter inch, which is the thickness of my glass. So with the cleats made, I'm gonna jump over here to the miter saw and just cut them down to their finished lengths, which is 12 and a half inches, the width of my glass. Okay, so now with the cleats made, uh, and I've got the rabbits cut in them, and I cut them down to a 12 and a half inch length, which is the width of my glass. Yours may vary. Um, I'm ready to uh, secure the cleats to the platform. But before I do that, I'm gonna use some double-sided tape um, and run some tape along the top and bottom of the glass. And then I'll put the cleat on that. It just helps secure the glass to the cleat. And then I'll pre-drill and countersink some uh, three quarter inch screws. I'll probably put three along the bottom cleat, three along the top cleat. And as you can see here, we have our 35 degree notch, our 30 degree notch, and then our 25 degree notch cut into the base of the platform. Um, so once we get that done, we'll be ready to install the actual sandpaper and the different grits. And I'll go through that once I get the uh, glass securely fastened to the platform. Once you've put together the sanding platform, the sharpening technique is pretty straightforward. The goal in any sharpening method is to form two flat intersecting planes. So the first step is to flatten the back face of the tool. When you have an even scratch pattern across the back of the tool, then you can move up to the next grit and then you just keep repeating that process through the grits until you have a polished back face. At the 2000 grit stage, it should, it should shine like a mirror and you can probably stop there and then move to the uh, bevel side of the tool, repeating the process throughout the different grits keep moving up once you've got an even scratch pattern on the beveled end until you get to the 2000 grit stage, at which stage you should have a mirror-like finish 
on the beveled side of the tool. Now you won't need to use all the grits of sandpaper for every sharpening session. As you gain experience, you'll learn when the tool needs a touch up and you can then move right to the appropriate grit. Also, it's not necessary to go all the way to grit, say 2000 with every tool. Most will be plenty sharp at around the 1000 to 1500 grit mark. All in all though, it's tough to beat the results from this method of sharpening. Since it doesn't require a major investment, I think I'm all in at probably $25. Uh, that's including the sandpaper. You know, it doesn't require a major investment and there's no need to compromise your woodworking with a dull tool. So I highly recommend the sharpening process and I think you'll be happy with this method. And you're always going to be able to replace the sandpaper. So you always have fresh grit sandpaper anytime uh, that you go to sharpening, sharpen a tool. So for starting out, these are the grits that I'm going to use now. You know, I might change it up later. I just want to see how this works out. And as far as adhering the, 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 the sandpaper to the glass, um, I'm just going to use double-sided tapes, but just on the ends. Um, and I'm going to be mindful not to sharpen all the way out to the ends. That way, because, you know, it's not going to make the surface completely flat if you're standing over the double-sided tape. Now you could use a spray adhesive here, just a light spray adhesive, because if you use too much, it kind of gums up and will make it lumpy and will not result in a smooth sharpening flat surface. Um, or you could just uh, spray some water on the glass and, and use that as a way to hold the sandpaper in place while you're sanding. It's typically up to you. I'm gonna try the double-sided tape and, uh, and see how that works, and if not, then I would probably just uh, spray water on it and just use the water uh, to adhere it just while I'm sharpening. And basically these are just, I believe, eight and a half by 11 sheets of sandpaper that I've just cut up into thirds. Um, that's, that's really all you need. So you really, out of one sheet, you should be able to get three um, out of each uh, sheet of the different grits, uh, which will make your uh, sandpaper last longer. So this, this is just wet, dry uh, automotive sandpaper. 3M does make, I believe, a uh, micro finish sandpaper, uh, which you can get, uh, but it's going to be a little bit more expensive than your automotive sandpaper. Here's my black iron pipe that I use to store my DIY track saw guides, and this is where I'm going to also store my uh, sandpaper uh, sharpening platform. And as you can see, it's up and it's out of the way. Um, and it's a good place for it. It's in the corner, so it's not going to take up too much space in the workshop, which is always a good thing. I did go back and label the angled notches with a permanent marker. That way I'd know which angle's which. And then uh, once I get comfortable with the different grits, I'll probably label the glass with the actual grit, just so that doesn't get confusing. Um, and then that should pretty much wrap it up. Well, that's going to wrap up this project. I hope this project helped you out. I hope it gives you some ideas on how you can make your own DIY sandpaper sharpening system or platform. This is really great for sharpening your chisels and your hand planes. And over the next couple of weeks, stay tuned because I'm going to be making a, a DIY honing guide along with my own chisels. A couple of weeks ago, I made some tri-squares and I really got a lot of satisfaction out of building my own tools. So. I'm gonna to try to uh, build a DIY honing guide and then some DIY chisels and we'll see how that works out, so stay tuned. If you're new to the channel and you like DIY projects and woodworking projects, then I invite you to subscribe to the channel. It's free and painless. I'd also ask that you click on that bell icon, that way you'll be notified of all our upcoming videos. To all my existing subscribers, I really appreciate all the support that you've given this channel. I'm Rick with the Ingrain Workshop. Until next time, have a wonderful day and God bless.